So this is not your usual vintage Apple keyboard, and that's because it's not even vintage at all. It's actually a replica of this keyboard that was shipped with the original Macintosh back in 1984, but it's meant for use with modern devices. So today, we're gonna use it with some modern devices and do a side-by-side -side comparison with the real deal. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So this is going to be another one of those non-sponsored product review-ish videos on the Vortex M0110 replica keyboard. They recently got in contact with me and offered to send one of these out for review. And even though I normally turn down these offers because I get a lot of them, I figured I'd accept this one because this directly relates to the vintage tech focus that you all have come to expect from this channel. Because Vortex here produces a handful of these vintage replica keyboards. They even have one based around the M0110A, which is basically this keyboard with a numpad added on to the right side, though that is currently in development, so it's not available as of me filming this video. But this model certainly is, and it goes for around $150 on their website. And if you end up purchasing one, this is what you will receive. What I really like about the box is it's based around, and apparently they do this with their other uh, replica vintage keyboards as well, but they try to kind of mimic the design of the box that the original real deal keyboard would have come in. So, you know, I think that's really neat. They just obviously put their own spin on it. But uh, yeah, so there it is. We'll go ahead and uh, take it out here. It slides out like this and we will uh, open this up and we'll see what lies inside. They do include a, a few extra accessories and stuff, which we'll get to in a moment, which is always uh, nice to see. So you've got the instruction manual here. Uh, you've got Chinese on one side, you've got English on the other. So this tells you how to uh, connect it. Uh, via Bluetooth, uh, because the really cool thing about this particular model that I got here is that it supports uh, connecting over USB, over Bluetooth, or over a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle, a, a USB wireless dongle that they have in here. But they also have another variant of this same keyboard that supports the QMK firmware if you're into that sort of thing. But I just opted for this one. It's called the triple mode variant because I would like to try this out on a few different devices. So we'll set the instructions aside. Here is the USB cable. It's a USB-C to USB-A cable. It's uh, partly coiled as well. So that's nice. And here is the keyboard itself. Now, when you purchase, you know, if you end up deciding to get a, one of these keyboards from Vortex, they do offer you a, a few customization options. And one of those is what keycaps that you get on the keyboard. So if we look at the side of this box here, you can see that I opted to get the G Pro yellow switches, but you've got a, a wide selection of switches. The, they've got the G Pro and the Cherry MX red switches on there. And that's great if you prefer one or the other. I actually have never used G Pro switches before, so I figured I'd give those a try. And uh, right here, here on the bottom of the box, we've got this little accessories bag where they've got a keycap puller, they've got the USB dongle, they have an Allen wrench, they also have a control key. So it's not an exact copy of the keyboard layout, but I would say that's a good thing because they've made some improvements to the layout of this one here that make it more suited for a modern system. For example, they've changed the tilde key to the escape key, they've added the function keys back, you just have to hold down this FN key over here. As a result of that, the shift key is a little bit smaller. Smaller. They've also moved the backspace key down here and put the delete key in its place and then they actually moved the backslash key up here. So they added another key in this area over here. And you can see with the names of some of these keys that they're trying to go for sort of a dual Windows and Apple layout. So this down here is just called the code key, but you have the symbol for the option key up here. So this is actually the Windows key. That's what the option key corresponds to in Windows. Uh, so, you know, they just have that there. The alt key is labeled as alt and command. Uh, there, and there's no control key. They did not add that. Uh, that is trying to stay true to the original layout, I guess. But I will say this keyboard feels more compact than the original, and that's just because it, they've actually slimmed down uh, the size of it, especially on the side here. You can see how much bulkier that the original keyboard is compared to the replica. And obviously the coloring on, on, on the keys and everything is different as well. But uh, still, I think it's a, it's a pretty great modern replica. It stays true to the original where it needs to, but it also adds a nice modern twist uh, to the keyboard layout a little bit. Though it would have been nice for them to add the control key, I think. Um, that is kind of my only gripe with it. But again, they are trying to stay true to the original layout. Uh, on the 
back here, this is the switch you use to uh, switch between the three different modes. So the center here, or I, is for just using the USB-C cable. G is for the 2.4 gigahertz wireless, and B is for Bluetooth. We'll check those out in a minute. This is where you plug in, or rather install, your batteries. Now let's go ahead and take it apart, and it's really simple. You just use the included Allen key, and you remove these screws. Just like that, we'll get the top cover off, and... There you go, and that's how easy it is to get inside. In fact, you can just lift up the entire keyboard here from the bottom plastic piece as well. And you could swap out keycaps, so you can do that without taking it apart. But you want to, you know, remove the uh, key switches or, you know, swap some of them out. I don't know, but you could do all that because it's really easy to get inside. And you can see right here is uh, where the spot for the control key switches are, uh, which I find interesting. Obviously, you can't really hook them up uh, with this, you know, going right on top of it. And it wouldn't even, you know, the, the spacing is off as well. All right, so we've got this plugged in over the USB cable to one of my Windows machines. And the reason I've done that is because the software that I want to show you is Windows only as of this moment. And you can download it by going over to Vortex's website. They've got the updates and downloads page, and they've just got it all for each of their keyboards. And they've got software and stuff for, in this case, we got the M0110 triple mode, so I downloaded the GUI for it. And this is what the software looks like. So we'll go ahead and uh, click on the keyboard there. And the main thing you can do is remap keys. So, you know, if you want, for example, and see, it's interesting how this virtual keyboard here shows the control key, even though that's not on here. So I guess on some other version, they had one with the control key. Um, but yeah, you can remap keys around. So if you want, for example, the, uh, the alt key to be the control key, you just select the alt key here and you select control on the bottom. And I can then hit control shift escape to bring up task manager. So yeah, you can easily remap keys. You can also change the language. That's a great thing. You can change that over to English. Uh, that way we can actually read, uh, <laughs> you know, what everything says. Uh, so you can have multiple configurations too. So if you want to, you know, edit this, you can rename it, add a new one, delete that one, and you've got macros. All right, so I figured next up we'd take a look at using this thing over Bluetooth, and then we'll do something really fun and kind of pointless. So, you know, pretty much every one of these videos on the channel. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and swap it over and uh, put in two AA batteries. And to put this into pairing mode, we can look at the manual here to see the key combination is FN, I assume left alt, and either one, two, or three, depending on what device you want to pair. So you can pair up to three devices. So press for three seconds. I assume press and hold for three seconds. So we'll do FN, left alt, and one. And there it is. So we'll tap that. Bluetooth pairing request, we'll hit pair. And there we go. So now if I uh, go into notes here, yep, I can type out uh, whatever I want without any issues. That is lovely. So, you know, we'll say, hello world. Uh, I am typing, if I can, <laughs> that's not what I want. Oh, see, I'm so used to, this is kind of my other gripe with this, is the relocation of the backspace key. Even though this key is smaller, I'm still naturally going up here thinking it's the backspace key, but it's not. Hello world, I am typing this document on a replica Vortex keyboard from Vortex. That's a lovely way to say that. Hello world, I'm typing this document on a replica Vortex keyboard from Vortex. But yeah, there's two practical ways of using this keyboard. Now we're going to do something impractical and just really silly. Because who said modern devices were the only thing you could use this with? No, 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 no. We're going to be using this thing on my Macintosh SE FDA HD using the lovely, wonderful USB for VC, one of my favorite little devices that allows you to use modern peripherals like this on vintage computers. I did a video on it back in early 2022. So we've got it all hooked up. All I got to do is plug in the USB cable. I can even do this over Bluetooth if I wanted to, uh, because the USB for VC supports that. But I'm just going to plug it in over USB to keep things simple. And now we're just going to open up. Let's see here. I still got my Thunderscan disk in here from back when I did that video. My God. Uh, let's just open up uh, keycaps here and yep it works because the usb for vc is like literal magic it, i just can't get over how cool this thing is even over a year later i still absolutely love it so uh but yeah so you can use this thing with vintage computers if you absolutely want to uh but you know i just had to test this out and throw this in here because it wouldn't be an mjd video without doing something pointless so uh yeah there you go but that is a look at the Vortex M0110 replica keyboard. If this at all interests you, or if you're interested in any of Vortex's other offerings, I do have an affiliate code 
uh, that they were generous enough to provide for me. So this video is not sponsored by them at all, but they are giving me an affiliate code. So if you purchase something through that link, uh, you will be supporting the channel without, you know, costing you anything extra. So uh, thank you very much, Vortex, for that. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this episode and want to get early access to my future content, I do have a Patreon down below as well that you can check out. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.